Netflix has come out with a live action adaptation of the anime One Piece. You have all these really like wacky, zany, colorful characters in the anime and they've made it like a really gritty, fun, realistic adventure, I guess. So today we are going to be taking One Piece and we are going to be drawing some of the characters as a classical painting. Now, I would really like to draw Monkey D. Luffy because he is the main character. He's this really like happy, go lucky, like energetic, fun guy. He wants to be a pirate. He claims that he is a pirate, but um, the running joke is sort of that everyone else oh, no. in the cast is like, you're not a pirate, <laughs> but we have to pick a character for you. I don't know One Piece. So we've got Nami and she's kind of the first character to go on an adventure with Luffy, but her character design is kind of boring. She is identified as a girl with orange hair and that is pretty much the only interesting thing about her. So the second character that joins Luffy's crew is Zoro and he is very identifiable because he's got this like bright green hair. He also carries around three swords. You don't see a lot of green hair in classical paintings. No. And I think having Luffy and Zoro, like that's the captain and the first mate okay. of the crew. So I think that'd be that really works. good to have them together. Let's do that. So the challenge that we've got today, we've got a really amazing anime we've got a really amazing live action adaptation so we want to add on top of that we don't want to just like copy one or the mm -hmm. other we sort of want to create our own thing but make the characters look really recognizable so we're just looking at some references for classical paintings because it is a very specific style but it's also very broad because you've got all these different time periods and they all have their own like signature they all have a very like moody lighting so you've got like a vignette in almost all of these examples they've also all got this very glowy feel which I understand this from using like oil paints and kind of layering and glazing. A lot of the people that you see in these paintings are very posed as well. They're doing something like they're putting a crown on their head or they've got their sword or holding a scepter or you know doing some sort of action. Getting your portrait painted was going to be like a once in a lifetime thing. Yeah. So I had to really show off your personality and everything. And you'll only find classical paintings of like the rich and the famous because mm. they're the only people who could afford it. So you don't get a lot of pirates who get their <laughs> painting <laughs> painted. That's such a good point. <laughs> I think the way our characters got their portraits painted was like their pirate crew who had to go like invade some like rich man's castle and then like take the painter hostage. <laughs> <laughs> so I think it'll be interesting trying to combine these bright colorful colors mm. but also make it moody and painterly. So I really wanted to show his powers as well because he's made of rubber so that his arms and legs can get all like oh. spaghetti, Okay. I guess. And obviously you wouldn't really see that in classical paintings. I think having that really, really goofy smile as well is also also feels quite of place in a classical painting, but um, just, just adds to the humor of it, I guess. In my head, I imagine that like the wind has like blown his hat off and he's used his yeah. rubber powers oh, to like yeah. extend his arm and catch his hat and put it <laughs> back on his head. I've given Luffy flip-flops, but I think that is also looking a little bit too modern for a Renaissance painting, so I might switch them out for boots. So I am going to merge all my layers together and just hope that that works out well. It will feel a little bit more authentic, I guess, a little bit more classical. And it just means that the edges of my character will be a little bit more blurred. My idea is that the painter of this classical painting has like gotten a bunch of props and like a backdrop and is making Luffy sort of stand in this very still position. So I'm gonna add a bunch of like ropes and barrels and um, maybe a sky in the background and that'll sort of give it that very like posed and forced feel. Mm. The most fun thing about classical painting is getting that extra little bit of texture and grit in there. So I decided to just go absolutely ham on the oil brushes that we've got and just try switching up the brush like every five seconds and just using brush after brush to get a real nice like variety of texture. A few of these brushes that I've actually used have got color variation built into them. With each brush stroke, a little bit more pink or a bit more purple or a bit more blue. This kind of mimics the effect of traditional painting. I found that the technique of merging all of the layers together was like a really fun way to go about digital painting. Because in classical painting, the direction of your brush stroke is actually really important. So you'll see that I mostly stick to diagonal brush strokes, especially when I'm nearing the edge of my character. I want those edges to be really sharp in some places and then really blurry in others. And that really depends on the brush stroke. One thing that I really wanted to mimic 
from classical paintings is that sense of really strong lighting and having that sense of contrast. This means that a lot of Luffy's body was actually in shadow and so to render the shadowed areas I actually used a light blue tone. In outdoor scenes the ambient light tends to be blue because the sky is blue. A big part of what helped these paintings to look classical and traditional was the inbuilt texture in the brushes and they all came from Jazz's brush pack. If you want your digital art to look like classical paintings then consider getting Jazz's ultimate digital brush pack. They come with a whole bunch of oil paints that have a really nice bristly texture for your classical painting look. Not just oil paints but watercolour brushes, charcoal brushes and lots of other textured brushes for all your traditional needs. They are a collection of 83 brushes that myself and Jazza have collaborated on so you know that they are at a really professional standard and you're really going to be getting everything that you need to start your digital art journey. They are fully compatible with Adobe Photoshop, Procreate and Clip Studio Paint. We also have a digital painting handbook which teaches you all of Jazza and my secrets to creating awesome digital art. It is a 100 page deep dive into our painting process and you will get step-by-step -step instructions into how to make art like us. Use the code INSERT BRUSHES to get a discount on the digital brush pack. So check out the link in the description below. When I was looking at classical paintings, I noticed that all the backgrounds had, you know, a fairly monochromatic but very textured kind of feel to them. So just to get my mind to where it needed to be with classical paintings, I began with that background because um, once that texture is in there, then and it stops you from making your character like too smooth and all of that as well. And then I went in with dark red line art because once I start adding the lighter colors on top of that, the dark red will automatically fade into like the little cracks and crevices and become your ambient occlusion. Yeah. In videos that I've seen online of like traditional painters, they use those really deep saturated colors for line art and it actually becomes shadow shapes later on. Yeah, and I think the reason they go for like a darker red color is to stop the colors from becoming muddy. Mm. I think if you just go with black they tend to become very desaturated and very yeah. like gross and then if you use a red instead it sort of keeps the vibrancy. And red works really well on skin but particularly for um, Zoro because he's overall a green character so that red is going to be that complementary underpainting. Yes, opposites yeah. on the color wheel. Mm. Um, and because I don't know this character uh, I just had to look through like a few hundred pictures of him and try and identify what his iconic features were. So Obviously his hair, not only the colour but specifically like the directions that it points in but also he's got three swords like you told me about and you gave me a little bit of backstory that one of them, one sword in particular, the white one is special to him because yeah. of like it was his friends. You're just gonna have to watch yeah. the show I think. <laughs> but there's clearly like some heartfelt like emo backstory there. Um, I know he's got a huge scar across his chest so I wanted a pose that could show that off. His head and face shape and it's a bit of like a silent character characteristic but his attitude that had to come across in the pose and in the lighting which I'll add in later. Definitely a much more like serious character mm. the show. It kind of grounds everybody else who's all like fun happy colors. Oh good all right I'm on the right track then. Yeah. Three swords is a lot to pose in one image and make it aesthetically pleasing make the composition work and all that. Because they're like do you point them all in the same direction? Yeah. Do you have them sort of like crossing? Like there's a lot of things that you can do. Mm one sword let alone three. Totally didn't go to the bathroom and try and like pose myself. <laughs> <laughs> So how did you land with your Luffy? How did he go? I think he's, I'm very proud of it. I think I have done both the anime and the Netflix adaptation justice. I think I've got a good mix between anime Luffy and live action Luffy. Yeah, I think we've really nailed the style today. I don't know if I've nailed the style, but I was just happy to paint a sketchy hot guy. I don't know this character, so let me know in the comments whether I did justice to Zoro. I'm sure he's got like his own legion of fans. I hope I got most things right. The, the important thing though is like his vibe though. We all need to bully Ariel into watching One Piece because it is fantastic. Are you gonna pay me for the 1000 hours it's gonna take for me to watch it? <laughs> <laughs> if you like this series and there's another anime or cartoon that you guys want us to draw classically, then make sure to 
to leave your suggestions in the comments. Thank you to our wonderful patrons for inspiring us every day and keeping the channel running. Without your contributions, we wouldn't be able to make cool art like this every day. So thank you, thank you, thank you. And last but not least, if you are interested in getting those digital brushes, then check out the link in the description below. We actually asked our Discord community what they thought about One Piece, the anime and the Netflix adaptation. 